from the WTAM archives thanks to Board Op Dan, aka Dan Grossman. We've got a Rick Gilmore treasure here. Nobody's heard this except for Dan and I, and maybe Dan played it for some people, who knows. Anyhow, you guys are going to get to hear it. Gilly was upset about Governor Taft making it so the police could pull you over for not wearing a seatbelt. Okay, Gilly. Good thing you weren't taking calls, or Ken from Chagrin would have been calling. Well, maybe I didn't wear my seatbelt back then. I don't remember. Good evening. Welcome. Happy Easter to all of you of the Christian Elk. I'm here, well, a truncated program indeed. Only a half an hour long, but here nonetheless. Thanks, Ray. Well, it's the least I could do, of course. I love you, Gilly. I was driving down here in my new car. An unmarked 1987 Yugo. And I was thinking about some things that bother me. There are a couple of bad ideas. I touched on them yesterday. You'll have to excuse me. I burned my tongue on a piece of Easter ham having dinner. So and I also want to remind you that since I am only here for a half an hour, I will not be taking any phone calls, all right? So don't bother calling. I'm not going to give you the phone numbers. There's no sense picking up the phone. Do not dial. Sit back, relax, and listen on this fine Easter evening. Just relax and, and have at it. As I was saying, when I was driving down here, I was thinking, uh, and I touched on this a little bit last night, and I want to bring it up again tonight, that Governor Taft wants you to be pulled over Pulled over, believe this, for not wearing your seatbelt in the future. Governor Taft wants a tougher seatbelt law for Ohio. He wants law enforcement officers to be able to stop and ticket drivers who are not wearing their seatbelts. Governor's office said Ohio's current safety belt law is the state's only moving violation that does not allow an officer to stop and ticket a motorist for the offense. Did you catch that? Governor's office said Ohio's current safety belt law is the state's only moving violation that does not allow an officer to stop and ticket a motorist for the offense. Well, I can tell this lack of sleep is catching up to me. That's what happens, what happens when we, uh, when we sprung ahead. Ah, that's all right, I have all week to relax, don't I? Police can cite a motorist for failing to use a seatbelt only if the person was stopped for another offense, such as running a traffic light. A similar proposal failed last year in the legislature, and I hope it fails again this year. Do you understand how, um, it's a good idea to wear your seatbelt. Do you understand that? I think it's a darn good thing you should do to try and protect yourself when you're out on the roadways. How many times have I come down here to do a program and said that the most stressful part of doing a program is not sitting here in front of the microphone talking to you, not taking your phone calls, which, of course, I said I'm not tonight. The most stressful part of, of the entire program is the act of driving down here and the act of driving home, especially if you've uh, got a snazzy car like mine. An unmarked 1987 Yugo. Yeah. There are people cutting me off constantly. Now, I take 90. I used to take 71 in. When I take 71, as soon as you get on at Clegg Road, as soon as all the idiots tried to merge at Grayton Road and decide whether or not they wanted to take 480 or 71, they would cut across lanes of traffic, never look, cut you off, don't care less. I'll tell you, let me reach behind me and grab one of my sound effects cards. Da -da 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 -da. Should be more prepared. They should make those closer, huh? It will result in a resounding wreck someday. <laughs> I just certainly hope it does not involve me. So it's a darn good idea when you're out there on the roadways to just use common sense. Now, we understand common sense, don't we? But do we need to be babysat by the governor? Do we need to be babysat by the legislature in the state of Ohio? Do they have to tell us what to do? I don't think so. I don't like the... I Look, it's a good idea to wear your seatbelts. My girlfriend never wears hers. And I tell her, I say, honey... Put your seatbelt on. Could you please put your seatbelt on? When she drives, and I put the seatbelt on, she looks at me like she's a bad driver. I said, you don't understand. This is not a reflection of the fact that you stop too quickly. <laughs> because she does. One thing she does wrong. She's a good driver, but once in a while she'll be going along and she'll just be doing a little too fast and she'll come up on somebody's back end and she'll really lay on the brakes. And I said, you realize if there was some oil on the road or some gravel on the road or something like that, you might not be able to stop. Not considering how many years she's been driving and how many years I've been driving. I would think that my advice is good and should be well taken. And, well, sometimes you know how it is with women. You give them advice and they look at you funny and they don't want your advice and they tell you to be quiet and leave them alone. You're picking on me. No. So I say, honey, could you please put your seatbelt on? I think it's just a good idea that you wear it. Well, that's it. It's a good idea that you wear it. I don't even think it's a good idea if you get pulled over that they should tell you whether or not you should wear a seatbelt at all. Common sense. That's your choice, isn't it? That should be your choice. 
That's what it is. It should not be one of these deals where the government has to tell you, or the governor has to tell you, or the police department has to tell you. This, to me, is not them looking out for our better interests. This, in my estimation, friends, is the police department looking for a way to pack in more revenue. That's what it is. You'll hear about all kinds of people getting pulled over because they were not wearing their seatbelt. Well, why don't we pull people over for being dumb? Could you do that? If the cop says, okay, guess what? I think you're dumb. You deserve some sort of a ticket. Well, how many tickets could we give out for that? Millions. Millions across the country. Everybody. How many dumb drivers do you see on a daily basis? Like I say, every time I come down here, the most stressful part of coming down here and driving home is, is, is actu the actual drive down here and back, not sitting here on the microphone. This is not stressful. This is easy. No one's going to cut me off down here. Besides, I cut you off. Well, yeah, <laughs> Dan's running the board. He could cut me off. He could push a button. <laughs> Be like across three lanes. Zoom, I'd have to pull off to the side of the, the, side of the radio program and wait for it to restart. So yes, common sense is something that should dictate to us that we should wear our seatbelt. It should also tell you that you should not speed, which of course they can pull you. They can pull you over for damn near anything. And if this goes through in the state of Ohio and they can pull you over for not wearing a seatbelt, I can just hear it now. This is going to turn into an issue. This is going to be one of those things. This could be one of those things that could keep Governor Taft from being reelected. This could be one of those things where Governor Taft comes out. Why is it that we've got the... I, I was all with Bobby Taft there for a while. I was all behind him when he did the Wilford Berry execution. I thought, hey, we got a good governor going here. Then they even, they even rumbled that they might get rid of E-Check. Could you believe that? Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Scale back the operation? Because that, to me, is another way of trying to get a ton of dough out of us. It's taking our money. 20 bucks every two years. How many cars out there? Have you noticed that? I, mean, I know I'm getting off on a tangent when it comes to cars here, but I, I ramble sometimes. Have you noticed how few old cars there are on the road nowadays? Have you looked around and cars have gotten smaller and smaller aside from these giant monsters, these SUVs you see out there like the Ford Expedition and Explorers and all those huge things like that? But for the most part, cars have gotten smaller. Cars have little V6s in them now to be zippy. They don't have to have V8s like they used to. Do you really think it's necessary for us to have our cars emissions tested? Because I look around and I'm hard pressed to try and find an old car. I used to do that. I used to buy and sell cars, that kind of thing. You could drive up and down the street and you could find Oh, some old lady who quit driving or, or some guy that just got another car and left his old car sit and it was 10, 12, 15 years old. Cars nowadays, you try and look around and everybody's driving something nice. I think the used car market's drying up except for late model stuff. So for the most part, cars are not polluting the way they used to. So I really don't think we need, so that's what we should do. Why couldn't the governor just come out and make me happy and probably make you happy as well? Just say, okay, we're going to get rid of e-check because it's really not necessary. You know how they came to that conclusion, don't you? We had one bad day here in the summertime. Middle of summer, it was a little smoggy out. Okay, so they checked the, uh, checked the air quality downtown and said, uh-oh, you're over some sort of a limit. So now everybody has to be e-checked everywhere, including counties surrounding Cuyahoga. Well, that's just dumb. So why can't we get a governor that says, okay, we'll get rid of e-check and not come out with some stupid seatbelt law? If you're going to do that, I'm telling you, if you're going to have cops have the ability to pull you over for not wearing your seatbelt, then they ought to just go ahead and say they can pull you over for being stupid. It's just that simple. As far as I'm concerned, if the cops are going to be omnipresent or ubiquitous, they're everywhere anyway. Look, don't get me wrong. If you're a cop, I'm on your side. And I know it's not your fault, because here's the trickle-down theory. The governor says this is a good idea. Now, if the legislature, which shot it down last year, says this is a good idea, now the whole thing gets passed along down the line to police chiefs and police departments and mayors and city managers and treasurers. And, and they'll say things to cops, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I were taking phone calls, I'd, I'd ask for a cop to call, but I'm not taking any calls, I repeat again. I'd ask a cop, I'd say, gee, you know, are you ever pressured when they say you complain about you want new cruisers more often? Do they ever tell you, well, go out there and write more tickets? It's not a quota system per se, but the very idea is that if you want something new, you want new guns, or you want bulletproof vests, or you want new, cr new cars, or you want new radios, or new computers, or something new, or something more, or a dog, a canine unit, something will come along where they'll say, well, start writing some more tickets then, damn it. 
Or they'll tell you, listen, now you've got to enforce this law. If you don't write any seatbelt ticket law, you know, you know, this law comes along and you don't write any, any tickets at all for that, this is just nonsense. And then we blame the cops. You and I sit around and blame the cops. Well, guess what? Don't blame the cops. It ain't their fault, okay, kids? Don't blame the cops. Blame, if this goes through, you can blame Governor Bob Taft. Is that Gilmore again? The guy's got a lot of intensity. It was wrong of me to assume that Gilly has no talent. Yes, it was wrong. And you don't have to call me Gilly here on Easter Sunday. You can call me... I believe that's Mr. Gilmore. Yeah, well, that'll work fine. All right, we were talking about dumb ideas. And like I said, I think that the governor coming out and saying that uh, we need to wear our seatbelt and that the cops should be able to enforce that is a dumb idea. Here's something else I touched on last night. I think it's worth mentioning again. This is another dumb idea. I want to remind you I am not taking phone calls, so please do not call the phone number. I haven't given it to you. I don't, I don't want you to call. I'm only here for a short period of time tonight. Uh, that's what happens when there's a game. So I just come in and I figured I've got so many things to say. I can just run my mouth. I don't need to, don't need to take any phone calls. Is that okay with you? Well, it better be because you don't have much of a choice. Now, gosh, I'll tell you, I just love playing my new carts. Came down here in my new car. An unmarked 1987 Yugo. A Yugoslavian import reflecting the cutting edge of Serbo-Croatian technology. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. I, I just like the sound of Dan Aykroyd's voice. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw on Cleveland Live Music, make sure to click on the subscribe oh. icon. And Patreon and, and GoFundMe information is, is below as well. Keep it going. Keep it going.